Good evening, 12th grade students, parents, and high school counselors. Thank you so much for joining us on a very auspicious day out here at the Knowledge at KPD Admissions 101 workshop series. We have Ms. Cindy Cordova from Boston College, who's here to present the workshop session to you today. As you've seen in our outreach campaign, the topic for the day is the importance of supplemental essays, which will be discussed in the first part of the session, which is the, 30 minute, for the first 30 minutes. And of course, the second 30 minutes of the session will be about Ms. Cindy's esteemed institution, which is Boston College. Once the presentation workshop is over for the day, of course, Ms. Cindy Cordova would be more than happy to answer all your kind questions, and she'll be happy to walk you through with all the answers that you'd be looking for. As you may have seen in our outreach campaign, we kindly request you to please post all questions in the Q&A box and not in the chat box. So it'd be very easy for Ms. Cindy to locate your questions and then, of course, answer them and then get in touch with you as well. If students are interested, please feel free to drop your email addresses as well so that she may be in touch with you long after this session is over for the day. And then I'm hoping these conversations continue for many months after this program. Having given this introduction, I would like to uh, kindly invite Ms. Cindy Cordova for the presentation session. Thank you so much, Ms. Cindy. We know it's very early in the morning in the US out there. So we truly appreciate your kind time. I'm now going to hand over the stage as well as the microphone to you. Thank you once again. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much, Kunal. I appreciate you and thank you for the invitation today. Uh, welcome everyone. Again, my name is Cindy Cordova from Boston College and I am a Senior Assistant Director within the Board of Undergraduate Admissions. And it is just always such a joy to connect with you, the students who will be applying down the road, the families are interested, the counselors, just such a wonderful community. Uh, I've been reading applications for about five years now, and it's always uh, really great to connect beforehand to answer your questions. I also want to acknowledge everything that's going on with the global pandemic, and please know that our hearts are with you and our thoughts are with you. And if any questions come up along the way, I am definitely a resource to you all. My email is on the screen. It is cordovac at bc.edu. So I hope to hear from some of you soon, especially since you are uh, seniors who might be looking at BC to apply soon. Um, I will be going over the supplemental essay questions, which is the Why Us essay, and I also will be showing you uh, examples uh, along the way. So I do hope that this is a productive conversation for you all and that you ask questions along the way, as Kunal mentioned earlier. So just to get us started, what is the supplemental essay? It is a college specific essay. It might be more than one. Um, and typically it is this determined by a university during the summertime before the application process begins. Sometimes university like Boston College will post these questions on the admissions website during the summer. So that way you can get a head start in looking at those essay questions and start writing that, them so that you're ready to put them down on the application when it is time. Now, every university is different, right? So just like you with your own identities, every university has its own identity. And what they're trying to gauge with the supplemental essay is why us? Why are you interested in being a part of this community? And so they're trying to see how much you know about the university, the research that you've been able to do, and also how you think that this university will be a good fit for you, given your personality, given your identities. So the purpose is twofold, as you can see on here on the screen, to tell your story, as is every space on the application to, for you to be able to advocate for yourself and tell your story. And then number two, to show that you understand the university, that you've done your research research and that you can see how the values of the university align with yours. Of course, a supplemental essay is just one piece of a puzzle. When it comes to the admissions office, we're looking at your writing through the supplemental essay, through the personal statement. We're also looking at your grades in the classroom, the classes that you've taken through your transcript. We're looking at your testing. We're looking at your commendation letters, your activities. So as you can see, the supplemental essay is one more thing that we can use and that I certainly use when I advocate for my students. So it definitely is very, very important. Now here on the screen, I have 
picked out the supplemental essays for Boston College. I want to use our own supplemental essays as a foundation for this session to help you understand what it is that we ask our students so that you become familiar with these questions. Um, and also for you to see some examples of how students have been able to answer these questions and to uh, show us that they know BC, but then also show you how maybe they felt short of doing that. So as you can see, some of these questions will be a little bit longer than your typical why Boston College prompt. They inspire you to reflect a little bit, to uh, think about your values, which is actually a really great exercise that I would encourage all of you to do. If you can sit down for a few minutes um, and just think about what you value, what makes you come alive, the kind of community that you want to be a part of. And then maybe use that list as you're gauging and researching the university to see if it is a good fit, if it aligns with what you believe in. So for example, question number two talks about diversity and inclusion. We want to know about students' backgrounds because at the end of the day, you'll be joining a community. You'll be in the classroom, but you would also be uh, engaging outside of the classroom in the, re in the residential halls. You, you, we want to see what kind of roommate you will be, what kind of friend you will be, what kind of colleague, what kind of peer. Uh, and so we want to know a little bit more about your experiences, the really opportunity for you to tell your story. And also for you to tell us how you think you're going to enrich the BC community by bringing the intersection of your identities into the community. Question number four goes into the Jesuit values of the university. Boston College is a Jesuit Catholic University. And so this question is certainly very specific in terms of the values of the university and how you think that your beliefs and your values align with the university and align with this model that we have at BC to help you uh, form into the person that you want to become the best version of yourself, but also someone who gives back. So as you can see, we are hinting at why Boston College and a little bit of a more elaborate essay prompt. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to review uh, the supplemental essay questions. And now what I would like to do is to show you some examples because I do think that one of the best ways to learn is to look at some examples and then to dissect them and think about, you know, what's working, what's not working. So bear with me one second here as I uh, stop sharing my screen, my screen so that I can share the sample essays. Okay. And if you can just let me know that you can see the sample essays on the screen, that'd be great. Kunal, maybe? Uh, Thank yes. you. Uh, we're not able to see it. We were able to see it earlier, uh, but now oh, it's okay. okay, so let me move it over here then. Can you see it now? Yes, we can see this perfectly. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, Kunal. Perfect. Okay. So what I would love for you all to do is to just take a moment here to review the, the response to this essay prompt. So the question is, question number two from the supplemental essays for Boston College that I just showed you a moment ago. So when you choose a college, you would join a new community of people who have different backgrounds, experiences, and stories. What is it about your own background, your experiences, or your story that will enrich Boston College's community? So this is a little bit of the workshop part of the presentation today. Uh, if you can take a moment here to review the student's essay. Uh, it's only three paragraphs long, and hopefully you can see it very well. I'm gonna just make that screen a little bit bigger now. And just take a look at the response. Ask yourself, what, do I, what have I learned from the student? What do I know about the student's life experience? And number two, how is the student showing us that they know Boston College at its core? Okay, so take a moment again to think about those two main purposes for the supplemental essay.
And as you're doing that, I'm gonna look at the Q&A here, just to answer some questions. Uh, Keshab, thank you so much for joining. Good evening. Uh, so my question for the day is how many supplemental essays do we submit typically to Boston College as part of the application process? Great. And then Niha asked, are we required to submit all four of the supplemental essays? And are there so are these supplemental essay questions for fall 2020? Thank you both for your questions. So I'll try to answer them now. Uh, so for Boston College, as you can see, we have four essay prompts. You pick one out of the four to answer. So you don't need to spend time answering all four because you're only being asked to, ask, to answer one out of the four. Now, if you're applying to the College of Engineering, uh, we have an engineering major that's new to Boston College uh, as part of the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. And for that one, I didn't post that question on here, but if you are applying to that major in, in human-centered engineering, then you will have to write that supplemental essay instead of, the, instead of selecting from one of, out of the four that I showed you just now. And all of those essay prompts can be found on the website, which is bc.edu forward slash admission. And when you go to the supplemental essay portion of the website, you'll be able to see all of the essay prompts, including the essay prompt for the human centered engineering um, question. For BC, these questions uh, provide you the space to use 250 words to answer the prompt. So you do have to be very precise with your words, as you can see, uh, and, and make sure that it all makes sense. And yes, Neha, these are the questions for the fall of 2020. So these are relevant, these questions are relevant to you all. Thank you for those questions, wonderful. All right, so let's go back, back to the essays here. And I just wanna highlight a few things. So what we learned from this student is that she recently uh, in third grade relocated from America to Peru. Um, and so this transformation, this move, really led to some uh, internal reflection on some challenges that she experienced, making this transition into a different country, living between two different cultures. Um, and then she also talks about how she was able to then pay attention to how she could help communities uh, in, the, in, in the Peru area, uh, underserved communities. And so she started to use her passions for education and learning learning um, and teaching English um, at a, at a, with underserved communities. So we can see on here that she talks about how this experience has really helped her have uh, and develop cross-cultural sensitivity because she has lived in two different countries and also how she has been able to help others. And then finally, in this last paragraph, she brings it back together to why Boston College. As you can see here, she's genuinely excited to come to BC and interact with students who are global, who are coming from different parts of the world. That tells me that she has done her research about BC. We are a global university. We welcome students from all 50 states in the United States and 78 countries from around the world. The state of Massachusetts, where we are located, is actually among the top four um, most highly populated by international students. So she'll be in a very global community. And she, you can see on here that she wants to be able to bring those experiences into uh, her day-to-day -day life at Boston College. So that was a really great way how to bring it all together. Now let's move on to the second essay that I want to show you, another great example, answering essay question number four on Jesuit education, again going back to the values of the university. And this question reads, Jesuit education considers a liberal arts a pathway to intellectual growth and character formation. What beliefs and values inform your decisions and actions today? And how will Boston College assist you in becoming a person who thinks and acts for the common good? So here again, we're trying to gauge what do you know about BC? What do you know about yourself as well at, up to this moment in time? It doesn't have to be a perfect answer, right? Like you're still developing yourself. This, this uh, process of personal formation is lifelong. It will continue even after college. But we wanna be able to see what you have reflected on up to this point and how you think the university will be a good fit for you. And reflection is a big piece of Jesuit education. So we're trying to see again how you're able to put all of that into words through this essay. So take a moment to review this answer here from the student.
And I'm gonna look at the Q and A again. So Surbi, the question is, what will be the word limit? Thanks for that question. So at BC, we ask for just 250 words. Other universities might have a different word count criteria. So just keeping that in mind, you know, it's very important to proofread and to make sure that you are uh, precise with your words. Thanks for that question. Kulwant, thank you for your question. So you're saying this is a, such a thought-provoking workshop. I'm glad, I'm glad you think so. Many thanks for the Jesuit education as I have studied at a Catholic school all throughout my schooling. Can I share how it helps cement my values and reflect how I can add to the diverse student body at Boston College? Certainly, I can see that you can have some fantastic essays for those two essay prompts uh, just based on your own personal experiences. So certainly just taking the time to uh, write it it out and then see you know where it makes the most sense perfect great question thank you all of you great questions all right so let's go back here to the essay so here we learn from a student who's really passionate about environmental policy and change and so he tells us a little bit more about how this passion came about which is just really fantastic uh, and to learn that he is also just really, really concerned about wetland degradation and wants to do something about it, as you can see here. So he starts to self-study and he finds that environmental justice is his passion, that that's what he wants to pursue. And in his research, right, he's able to see that BC has a fantastic environmental studies program. He knows that this is his way of giving back to the community, right, of being part, uh, an active participant of, of social justice, uh, being able to have an impact, a positive contribution in the world. And so he writes here, again, bringing it back to what do you know about the university, right? Is it important to tell your story, which he does here in the, in the first two paragraphs, because he's letting us know what his passions are and where they lie. But then he's also bringing it back to, well, so what? Why does this all make sense, right? Why BC at the end of the day? And he tells us here, well, because of your program, I think it would be a really great fit for me as I look into programs that have solid uh, classes that will help me. He mentioned some of those classes and then, you know, internships and innovation down the road. So again, a really great way for him to visualize himself on campus. And I can already see him taking classes on campus uh, and doing a good job of, of combining his passion with the greater common good. Okay, so those were two examples of what to do. Now let's see what not to do. Okay, so this is the final essay that I'm gonna be sharing with you. And we're going back to an essay prompt that you are already familiar with, uh, the one about uh, your story, your background, diverse communities, diversity and inclusion, and how do you think this will enrich the BC community? So take a moment to read this essay. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to review this essay. And let's just talk about it a little bit more in terms of what not to do. So here the student is telling us that he learned about Boston College through his uncle who studied there in uh, back in the day. And then in 2018, he had the chance to visit the university and to see different places. So he mentions O'Neill Library, he mentions uh, the dining hall, he mentions the football stadium at Boston College. 
And then he moves on to talk about the city of Boston and how he really wants to be in Boston because of the sports events that we have. He's a major uh, Patriots fan, and that's a football team here at the, uh, in, the, in, in the area. Um, and so then he talks about how he cannot wait to be part of the wrong university, as you can see on here, Boston University, which is actually my alma mater. Um, so I decided to put it on there. But as you can see, there are many, many things that do not click here with this essay. Number one, he's telling us about how he learned about the university through his uncle, but he doesn't really tell us why this university now is a good fit for him. So it gets stuck in the story of someone else who attended the university versus letting us know why he now wants to attend the university. He talks a little bit about some key landmarks, uh, spaces on campus, but doesn't really tell us why these spaces are important to him. Why do they make a difference as he's doing his research? Why do they stand out to him when he's comparing them to other universities and what they have to offer? Um, then he moves on to talk about location. And so for this portion over here, the second paragraph over here, if I was to substitute Boston College with the name of any other university in the area, it would still make sense, right? That essay would still make sense. So what that tells me is, is that this essay is a little bit too general, too broad, because again, I can replace Boston College with Boston University as he did here, and this essay makes sense for Boston University as well. I can replace it with uh, Brandeis and it would still make sense, right? And so making sure that you know uh, the impact that you are creating with your words and to not try to branch out so much with location because Again, especially in this area, Boston College is surrounded by around 60 colleges and universities within a nine kilometer radius of Boston College. And so what that means is that there are many, many universities in the area. And so when you start talking about location, uh, we can get the message can, can get lost. So make sure again, I mean, maybe you have a line there about location, but if it becomes something where you're not bringing it back to the university, the message can really get lost. And then finally, uh, make sure that you do your research, to make sure that you proofread uh, to make sure that you are including the name of the university that you're applying to. Uh, and this tends to happen a lot, believe it or not, you know, where students will say, this is why I want to go to X university, and it is not the university that the student is applying to. I think that you know, this year, 12th grade uh, year, year 12, gets really busy really fast. And so making sure that you have a support network of individuals who guide you and who help you and who can be a second set of eyes for you, uh, it's really important. So make sure that you use the resources of your counselors, um, of your friends, of your family members to, to help you make sure that you're proofreading and print out your essays and read word by word, you know, making sure that it all makes sense. So I hope that this was helpful for you all. I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint just to share a few key takeaways that I've already highlighted through, uh, throughout the session as we were looking at those essays. So one of those uh, ways is how to prepare and stand out. You know, re reflect on what you value, as I mentioned earlier, when you are able to know what you stand for and what you believe in, that can really translate into a stronger essay when you're writing it. Do your research, make sure that you connect with uh, people beyond the website, you know, go beyond the website. Don't just uh, look at the website, be able to connect maybe through sessions like this one, uh, information sessions that are happening virtually now, talk to students. Uh, we have a list of students who are ready to connect with you via email or through Zoom or through phone, and they're all listed on our website. And I'm sure that many universities also have similar resources. Make sure that you ask questions, right? Asking questions like the ones that you were asking me just now are, are, are really important so that you know what to, how to prepare and what to expect in terms of the review process. And then one thing that I list here is to look at the websites uh, and look at the mission statements for the universities. So I know that you're going to be going on the website and there's going to be a lot of information. Try to find the mission statement for that, for that university. See what the university believes in, what they stand for, where the, what the ethos, ethos and mottos of the university uh, is, because that way you can see, does that make sense for my own personal mission statement in my life, for my value system, does that make sense? And so all of that will help you then discern, evaluate, 
and help you connect at a higher level with uh, this university. So that when you apply, all of that will come through your application. It's like your voice, your personality, but also your, your research will empower, empower you along the way. In terms of what not to do, um, what you say is just as important as how you say it, right? So as we saw from, from some of those essays, um, students did a really great job being able to bring it back to how the facts of the university are relevant to them and why they're relevant to them. Um, and also being able to tell your story and share, well, this is why this university is important to me. And this is, these are the kind of skills and unique aspects of my personality that I will be bringing to campus. And so it's a really, really nice balance between those two purposes. Um, a major missed opportunity is not being able to circle back to write about why this university is important. So sometimes you'll just share your story and that will be it. Um, but that doesn't really get, get back to the fact that this is a college specific essay. We want to know why BC, why Boston College, and that should always be in the back of your mind um, so that you can circle back to that answer. Um, sharing about someone else who attended the university, someone else's experience without bringing it back to, so what, why does this matter to you now? Um, focusing on external attributes. So the, one of those external attributes that I mentioned on here that I showed you was the location. So again, being able to gauge, does this make sense? Am I uh, creating some nice balance here between the purpose of the essay and, and what I want to share with the university? the admissions office. Not answering the prompt is also a big issue um, where you're writing about just a free topic, but it doesn't really go back to answering the prompt. I've also seen students who copy and paste uh, from the personal statement. That's a big no-no. Uh, I know that you're multifaceted and multi-layered, so please help us understand a little bit more about who you are. Um, you know, so if you're writing about the same thing on the personal statement and the supplemental essay uh, and everything else about your application, is connected to that same thing, maybe a major, maybe an interest, um, you're, you're missing the opportunity to tell the university about other layers of your identity. And remember that universities, especially universities like Boston College, we have a liberal arts curriculum where we want to expose you to a little bit of everything. And we want you to connect to those, the intersection of your identities. So you can already start to show us in terms of your reflection as you're completing different parts of the application that you're mindful of that. Um, and then attention to detail is key. As I mentioned earlier, proofread, proofread, and proofread once again, that will certainly help you uh, have a stronger application to turn in along the way. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here for a second, just look at the Q&A. And then I'm gonna go through the, uh, some fun facts about Boston College, which is the university that I'm representing today. So there's a question here uh, on taking a second opinion from a school guidance counselor, if that is recommended, just to have another perspective to add in their thoughts. Certainly, you know, I think that uh, being able to have conversation partners, you know, to talk about your essay prompts, what you want to write about, uh, can be really helpful, whether to help you understand what you want to do, or what you don't want to do, right? Um, and I think it just helps get you out of your head and starts getting you into action steps, into writing it, into uh, proofreading it, into having multiple drafts. And I certainly would encourage you all to reach out to your counselors uh, and other people that you trust, you know, who, who definitely know about the industry, know about this whole process, have guided students along the way in the past, and they can certainly, they certainly have the best interest in mind. But at the end of the day, it is your story, so you would also have a choice to make if you want to take that advice or if you want to maybe adjust it uh, as needed to help you make sure that your voice uh, is there at the end of the day. Thank you for that question. All right. So now let's talk about Boston College, which is the university that I'm representing. And I do hope that that quick workshop that we did just now was helpful for you all. Of course, questions will continue to come up uh, and I, I'm certainly a resource to you all. 
I actually have traveled to India and I love, I love India. Um, I have uh, had some really, really incredible opportunities to connect with students and counselors while there. Um, and I will be the person reviewing your application if you apply from India. So I'm very, very excited that you're asking these questions now, that you're engaging with me now, because again, I will be taking a personal look at that, those applications uh, one by one. And so I wanna make sure that you have all the information you need. Boston College uh, is a Jesuit Catholic university that was founded in 1863. And uh, I don't know if any of you have been able to visit BC. Maybe you can add your comments on the Q&A box. Uh, but it is a wonderful, wonderful campus. It is a community within uh, Chestnut Hill, Newton, which is more on the suburban side of Boston uh, with close proximity to the city of Boston. We have around 9,300 undergraduate students are coming from all over the United States and 78 countries from around the world. And so around 8% of our students are international. We also have doctoral students and graduate students doing programs here. So overall, the population is 14,500 students. And so we're a mid-sized campus, not too small, not too big. Um, and certainly students definitely like that about BC. We're also one out of five universities in the Boston area that are categorized as a research one university. So what that means to you as a student is that you'll have access to funding to do uh, long-term research with professors who become your mentors along the way. And so many of these students end up presenting at symposiums or getting published. And that can be really helpful down the road if you are thinking about graduate school uh, or if you're thinking about building up your resume. Uh, so it's a really, really fantastic opportunity that we have at BC. You will be meeting students who uh, might have similar or different political views, religious views, life experiences, but at the end of the day, BC is a very welcoming place. We have students who might identify as Catholic and others who don't uh, because we welcome all students. Uh, a big part of the Jesuit Catholic tradition is to have uh, a sense of curiosity, to ask questions, to reflect. Um, and so you'll see that every little part of the education model here at BC goes back to that. We have two main mo models actually that are part of the ethos here at BC that summarize that. One of them is cura personalis in Latin, which in English translates to taking care of you as a whole person, educating not only your mind, but also helping you connect to your soul and your heart, your bigger purpose in life. Why is it that you're studying what you're studying? What makes you come alive? What are you passionate about? And then the second motto is men and women for others, which goes back to a really big Jesuit value that we have already talked about, which is giving back. So around 85% of our students are actually involved in volunteering around the city of Boston. And volunteering is not a requirement to graduate from BC, but our students really find that that makes them come alive and that they're really passionate about it. And they've, they've been doing that since high school, or maybe they found this new passion for volunteering when they came to BC. And they, they really enjoy giving back to a community that has become their home away from home in the city of Boston. As I mentioned earlier, Massachusetts, which is the state where we are located, is ranked number four uh, in the U.S. in terms of welcoming the, the, the highest number of international students. So it is a really safe place. Uh, it is a place that, where you'll be able to meet other students who are coming from overseas who are studying across the different universities in the area. This is a picture of Boston. As you can see, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are around nine kilometers west of downtown Boston. So we have the best of both worlds and that we have access to the city and the resources. Uh, and many students will take the train. We have a, a, a train that's parked right outside of our campus for students to move around the city. Uh, a lot of students will also bike or will walk. It's a very walkable city. Uh, so many students don't bring their car necessarily to campus, even if they're coming from nearby areas. Um, and, and, and we do have the best of both worlds because our campus has this just this beautiful, beautiful architecture in a more suburban neighborhood. So it still gives you that traditional campus sense, as you can see here, and that campus environment, while also being able to have quick access to the city. It's very, very typical for students to be able to have an internship in the city, 
take the train to downtown Boston for their internship and then the train to take the train back just in time for dinner at the dining hall on campus. So it's, it's, it really is allows a sense of independence as a college student while also being in the beautiful, beautiful campus uh, and, and having that support network on campus. Here's another picture of our campus. As you can see, it's very beautiful Gothic architecture. And then we also have a lot of uh, new buildings that are more modern, which it's a nice blend between uh, the historical side of the city of Boston, as well as the technological and innovative side of the city. Now, when you apply to BC, you will be asked to select one out of the four academic divisions listed here. So as you can see, we have the College of Arts and Sciences, which is uh, where the majority of our programs are housed in the sciences and the humanities, and also where our new engineering program will be housed. It's called Human Centered Engineering. And I do invite all of you to tune in to uh, sessions that we have all summer and all year long to learn more about Human Centered Engineering, and you can sign up for those on our website. Um, then we have the business school, which is called the Carroll School of Management, and everyone graduates with a business degree, uh, but then you also get to pick concentrations that can range from marketing to finance to entrepreneurship, so a lot of different things available through the Carroll School of Management. Then we have the Lynch School of Education and Human Development, which is for our students who want to be teaching in the classroom, uh, or maybe you have a passion for counseling uh, or for human resources down the road, and you want to learn a little bit more about the applied psychology that comes with that. <clears throat> this is a really great place for students. And then finally, we have a nursing school. It's called the Canal School of Nursing, for those of you who are interested in being in, in that realm, in that field. I do want to mention that when you are looking at which academic division to apply to, if you are interested in business or nursing, uh, we do ask you to directly apply to those academic programs, academic divisions, because they're very small cohorts that we bring in every year, as you can see. Uh, and it's very difficult to switch into the business school or into the nursing school once you are at BC with another major outside of those two academic divisions. So again, if you wanna be in business, if you wanna be in nursing, uh, definitely directly apply to the Carroll School of Management or the Cornell School of Nursing. Um, with, with switching programs besides those two uh, things that I wanted to mention, it is easy to switch programs. Um, it, it's also easy for you to come in undecided, undeclared. Uh, so if you haven't picked a major yet, that's totally fine. Uh, around 40% of our students who come in to Boston College every year come in as, as undecided, undeclared. And I would recommend that you apply to the College of Arts and Sciences uh, and, and for that reason, because it really provides you with more options down the road uh, as you're selecting your program. Here in the United States, the first two years of your education will be to fulfill your liberal arts core curriculum classes and also to help you explore and think about what you wanna major or minor in. Um, um, and so you have time. You don't have to declare your major until your second semester of your sophomore year in college at Boston College. And so that gives you some time. And you will always have an academic advisor to guide you along the way, to help uh, make sure that you're taking the classes that you need to discover what it is that you want to study down the road. But we do have many students who end up studying more than one thing for a double major or maybe for a combination of a major and a minor. That's definitely very, very typical. One thing that brings all of these academic divisions together that serves as a foundation for all of the academic divisions is a liberal arts curriculum. So what that means is that you'll be able to take classes outside of your major, outside of your main program. And those classes are there to help you become a well-rounded thinker and speaker, someone who is able to communicate effectively. And so you'll be able to take classes that maybe inspire you to select a second major or to select a second a minor. So all of that is definitely the flexibility that is available when you come to a liberal arts selective institution like Boston College in the United States.
the community at Boston College is definitely very strong. Uh, we have many students who get involved on campus or in the city, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, and so every year we have students who set up tables uh, at one of the quads, as you can see here on campus for a student involvement fair. Um, and you will sign up for more than one thing that you can handle. Uh, but there are some really fun student clubs and organizations like a beekeepers association, a knitting club, uh, political based organizations, organizations, religious-based organizations, community service organizations, you name it. We also have uh, a big scene in the arts. So many students will be involved in art, uh, theater, uh, music. We also have uh, um, a, a big event that happens every year in the spring that's called the ALC Showdown that is for uh, showcasing culture through music and dance. And so it's really, really wonderful. And then we also have students who are heavily involved in sports. Uh, we are a division one school when it comes to sports. So many students will come into Boston College as student athletes for Division I. Um, and football is definitely a, a big uh, event on the weekends, especially on the fall. Um, I'm sure that many of these things this year with the outreach from student clubs and organizations will happen virtually uh, for our students. But hopefully by the time that you, you're getting uh, ready to come into Boston College, we'll be able to have some more in-person activities um, due to the global pandemic. Um, if you're not interested in being a student athlete, but you still love sports like I do, um, maybe you find yourself joining one of the intramural uh, sports teams or the club sports teams, uh, which certainly provide you with more flexibility when it comes to your schedule. Of course, we have resources for our international students. Uh, we have an Office of International Students and Scholars that helps students with their visa questions, with um, you know, any questions related to travel, to being here with orientation. Um, we also work very closely with a career center specialist that works with international students to guide them through the process of securing internships and jobs down the road and what that looks like. Uh, as students, you can be a peer mentor to another international student as a way of giving back and helping guide those students through their first year at Boston College. Um, and then of course, we hope that students get involved with International Education Week, um, where you're able to showcase uh, the global mindness and the global uh, personalities and experiences on campus. Um, we also have a lot of professors and staff who host international students during traditional US breaks that we have here, uh, breaks on the calendar, on the schedule, so that you don't have to freak out or worry about you know, going back back home if you cannot go back home at that point point in time um, many of our staff and professors will open up their homes um, and provide you with space for you to stay uh, with them and, and be part of the traditions in the US and learn about those traditions or you can certainly stay in your dorms as well I'm gonna look at the Q&A now before we uh, dive into the application process Uh, Shatan, thanks for your question. I'm more than happy to connect with you. Maybe we can do that offline if you can just email me. Uh, my email is cordovac at bc.edu and I will also post it at the end of the session. More than happy to talk to you about my experiences as a student in the area. I love Boston. That's probably why I'm still around uh, in the area. It's a city that definitely grows with you and there's so many resources uh, that provide you a sense of independence and comfort at the same time. Uh, Rash, thanks for your question. Uh, you can certainly apply undecided, undeclared. As I mentioned earlier, my advice would be to apply to the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences to give you the opportunity to explore further. Thank you. Uh, Raj, Rajav, uh, will students be allowed to pursue their passions via research opportunities? Absolutely, and research is interdisciplinary at BC. We are a tier one research university. We're one out of five universities in the area of Boston that have that classification. Um, and so what that means is that you can be doing research in the classroom, but you can also look at long-term research with funding. And again, it is interdisciplinary. So it's not just for my students in the science, fields, but also in the business school, in the political science major, in the English major, uh, different, different students can get involved, certainly. And we're actually building the Schiller Institute for Integrated Life Sciences and research that's going to be a space for 
collaborative research across different uh, studies, uh, across different programs of study. And so it will definitely look at big questions, complex problems in the world and how we can assess them through different lenses. And that's where we need students from different backgrounds and students from who are studying an array of different things to be able to bring their perspectives into solution, uh, solutions for real life problems. Perfect. Neha, um, given the amazing opportunity to pursue the liberal arts that could be coupled with business major, at what point can we declare a double major and how many liberal arts general classes can we take during the course of the program? Fantastic question. So the core curriculum or general education classes consist of 15 classes, one five, um, and you can check them out on the website. They're all labeled. Uh, there's a class on cultural diversity. There's a class on the sciences, the humanities, um, and depending on your program, some classes might require uh, you know, different numbers of classes that will fulfill those requirements, but typically it is 15 classes in the liberal arts. And then as a business major, uh, certainly you have the flexibility to be able to pick up another major. Um, and those conversations will happen with your academic advisor. So, um, you know, the second, second semester of your sophomore year, you are declaring your major, but at the same time, you do have time after that to add something on. All right, I'm going to stop here for a second, just as we talk about the application process, and then I'll come back to the Q&A. Um, one more thing that I want to mention is that classes at BC tend to be small. So the average class size is 27 students, and the student-faculty ratio is of 11 to 1, so 11 students to one professor. And so we have designed our classes to be small because we, we do love uh, being able to function like a college, like a, like a smaller, more intimate experience, even though we are a large research university, a mid-sized research university. Um, if you are ever in our large lecture hall, which we do tend to have some of those classes as well, then those classes get broken down into smaller discussion groups that meet once or twice a week with around eight to 10 students. So it definitely, definitely gives you the opportunity to interact with students in a smaller classroom um, to explain what happened in the larger lecture. I also want to address a question that came up ar around pre-health and pre-law. So if you're interested in medical school or law school down the road, we do offer pre-health and pre-law and pre-medical opportunities for students to have uh, access to those resources uh, because those programs have in, in the United States are at the graduate level. We don't want you to fall too behind or to wait too long to become engaged with medical school or law school questions that you might have. So by being in the pre-law, pre-med tracks, uh, you have access to an academic advisor who helps you stay competitive for admission into medical school and law school down the road. We actually have our own law school on campus. So we work very closely with the admissions office at the law school to make sure that our students are preparing themselves with research opportunities, with internships, with classes that they can take um, that can help them be competitive for admission down the road. And one thing that I want to share with you all that we always hear from the admissions counselors at the, at the graduate programs for, for medical school and for law school is that they want to see students who are well-rounded. Now, not students who are just taking classes in one realm that's very specific to law, very specific to science, but rather an array of different classes that do help them be strong communicators, that do help them be compassionate leaders. And so that's where the, the beautiful um, aspects of the liberal arts education come in and can be really helpful for you down the road. When it comes to the application process, uh, Boston College uh, has the application posted on the Common Application website. So that's the only place where you'll find our application. And again, you will be asked to select one division out of the four divisions that we talked about earlier. It is a holistic review and a contextual review, meaning that we're looking at uh, different pieces of your application that help us understand who you are as an individual, someone who is multi-layered, multifaceted. The transcript is definitely one of those key documents that comes from your schools, that outlines the classes that you've taken uh, and the grades that you've gotten in those classes. We also look at your external board exams uh, and predicted grades in order to determine you know, how your, the strength of your curriculum and the strength of your, um, of your knowledge. Uh, for standardized testing new this year and relevant to you seniors, uh, it is optional for you to submit the SAT or the ACT. Um, so you don't have to send it to us if you don't want to. On the website, you can see 
what the middle 50% of students who were admitted to Boston College had in previous years. If you need any guidance with that, you can certainly email me, but all of that is available on the website as well. So that way you can gauge, you know, if it is going to be a good fit for me, if I should submit those scores or not. We do still require the English proficiency test. So those could be the TOEFL, the IELTS, or the Duolingo English test. For many of you, I'm sure that we can probably waive those tests. Um, and that will depend on a criteria of different things uh, and sending in a form. So make sure that you're keeping that in mind because if you're applying as an international student, this is a requirement. The English proficiency test is a requirement that will pop up on your applicant portal. Uh, but again, just follow up with us if you feel that you can get that waived. Um, especially you know, if you're an English speaker at home, English is your first language, you've been taking classes in English at your school, then we can certainly look into all of that for a waiver. I have listed here the minimums for these tests, as you can see. Um, so that way that can help you uh, gauge whether you want to submit the test scores if you have them already. Remember that eliminating the SAT and the ACT, if you don't send those to us, because that's totally fine. Obviously, this year has just been really crazy uh, with the global pandemic. And, and access to those tests has been rare. Um, you know, it, it's one less thing that we have to review your application. That's totally fine because we have other things on the application that will help us. But if you have additional things or other things that you want to submit to us in terms of your scores, in terms of uh, English proficiency tests, you can certainly send that our way. All of that can be can be reviewed by all of us and will be reviewed if we receive it. Then we get to know you through the essays. We've spent a lot of time earlier today talking about the supplemental essays, and that's just one essay out of the two that you'll be writing for BC. The second essay is a personal statement that you get to write through the Common Application website. And so the Common Application will give you around seven different prompts. You get to pick one, and, and that essay will be seen by all universities that you apply to through the Common App. Um, and again, that essay prompt is just really getting to the heart of the matter, your story, uh, because we don't hold interviews at Boston College. We really get to know you through your essays, through your writing. So making sure that you do put a lot of effort in helping us understand a little bit more about a piece of your world uh, through those essays. Recommendation letters, we require two recommendation letters at Boston College. One is coming from a teacher from a core subject, and then the other one is coming from your um, college counselors at the high school. So making sure that you start thinking about who it is that you're going to ask for those recommendation letters, because we certainly learn a lot about your character through those letters. And then a list of your extracurricular activities that you've done from ninth grade all the way up to this point, which we know obviously that there was an interruption in those activities. Um, but we are curious to know what you have done during this time um, that we've been um, quarantining at home. Maybe you're spending more time with your family and, and sitting down to have meals. Maybe you're learning how to cook. Maybe you're learning uh, a new skill set that you're interested in. Maybe you're reading more books. So you can let us know about those activities in, in that for that section of the extracurricular activities page. And then finally, we also consider additional factors. So any context related to your background, to the school that you're attending, to your life story, all of that is uh, put together as part of the puzzle to help us gauge who it is that we're going to be bringing into the Boston College community. And for this year, I believe that we're looking for 2,300 incoming freshmen to start next fall. So. You know, we typically receive around 30,000 applications or so. So when you're thinking about applying to BC and how you can stand out, uh, we have uh, early decision rounds that are available to you all. So looking here on the right, uh, we have the dates. So with early decision, what that means is that BC is your top choice school. You don't see yourself going anywhere else and you want to apply to Boston College early decision. It is a binding agreement. So that means that if you get admitted to Boston College through early decision, you're coming to BC and you have to withdraw your applications from all of the other universities to which you have applied. 34% uh, of our freshman class this past year was selected through early decision of one and two combined. And then the majority is still being selected through regular decision, which is not binding, uh, but it definitely can get more competitive down the road with regular decision because of that component of having more applications coming through regular decision than through early decision. 
in terms of affordability, we do have a scholarship that is relevant to all of my international students, um, as well as US citizens, and that's called the Gavali Presidential Scholarship. It is merit-based, so it is not based on how much your family can pay to afford to send you to BC, but rather how it is that you're sending out based on your academic uh, credentials, as well as the activities that you're a part of, the research, the extracurricular activities, the volunteering, the activism that really makes you stand out when it comes to social justice, all of that uh, that is relevant to the culture and ethos at Boston College. And so we select 15 students, one five every year from all over the world to be part of this honors program and full tuition scholarship, excuse me, let me go back to that slide here. Um, and the deadline, if you want to be considered for that scholarship is the 1st of November of this year. It doesn't mean that you're applying early decision, it just means that all of your credentials are in uh, by the 1st of November for us to consider, uh, consider you. And there are no additional essays, no additional applications. You're submitting the same application, the same essays, the same requirements to be considered just by an earlier deadline of the 1st of November. If you are a US citizen, then you can also uh, qualify for need-based financial aid. And so we do have um, a lot of aid, the majority of our aid that comes through the form of need-based financial aid, in which case we would need both the FAFSA, which is a free application for federal student aid, and the CSS profile to be submitted. All right, so I have a few minutes here for questions. So let me take a look at the Q&A. Uh, Hishab. So you asked about tests optional for the fall of 2021. So students who are seniors right now, which I believe is all of you who are tuning in, um, who are uh, applying for admission into the fall of 2021, um, we have gone tests optional for the SAT and the ACT. Okay, and then in terms of scholarships, um, we're, we're going to be looking at other things, as I mentioned earlier. So if you feel very, very strongly about your test scores and you want to send them in, you certainly can, uh, but it, you, won't, you will not be at a disadvantage because even for scholarships, we're going to be looking at the rest of your credentials that you submit, like your transcripts, your activities, your recommendation letters, your essays, all of that, all of that will be looked at. But I definitely invite you to check out the BC test optional page so that you can learn more. There's a fantastic Q&A on there for you to learn more. Um, Kulwand, um, in terms of this year with COVID-19, uh, the university will be reopening at the end of the month of August. And, um, um, classrooms will be at a 50% capacity and of course the university is taking very strict norms in terms of what that's going to look like. It's going to be a hybrid model for our, for our students who are returning and our incoming freshmen who are starting this fall uh, where some of them will be in the classroom with the capacity um, and others will be in their dorms taking the classes but it will be a residential experience on campus and we actually have a fantastic website called Reopening Boston College. You can just google it and you'll find a fantastic FAQ on there as well to see the university's response to keeping everyone safe. Thank you for your question, Hadrian. I def, I def answered that already. So we still have English proficiency tests as a requirement and you can certainly email me if you would like to request a waiver down the road after submitting your application. Rash, thank you for your question. I just answered it. We don't have early action rash, just early decision and regular decision. And again, early decision just means that you apply early, you find out early, and it is a binding agreement if you get admitted into Boston College. Kona, I do wanna check back with you because we are almost at time. Um, so I wanna make sure that, you know, of course, how many able to get to all of the questions on Thank here. You. They're fantastic questions. Um, here's my contact information nonetheless in case you want to send me these questions and I can certainly take a look uh, later and get back to the students. You were all so wonderful with all of your questions and please jot down my email address. Uh, let me know if this was helpful to you. Let me know if you know, if you uh, would like to learn more, we have uh, virtual information sessions happening every day of the week. And then we have a fantastic open house event that will happen virtually for the entire month of September. So certainly tune into that and sign up uh, through our inquiry form available online so you can stay in the loop with updates. Absolutely, uh, Cindy, if you want to take a few minutes, uh, we're absolutely fine as well. If you have the time, of course, because we understand okay. other uh, meeting engagements. Uh, so we completely understand that. So if you'd like to take time to answer them, uh, we're more than happy to extend the session as well. So please don't worry. Thank you so much. Okay, sounds great. Absolutely. I'm more than happy to. So Josh, uh, your question is, can you share about 
below application the documents in terms of their importance on the application process. Certainly. So the transcript is one of the most important documents along with your external board exams that we look at because of course, and when you come to Boston College, it is an academic experience first and foremost. We wanna make sure that you graduate from the university. So we're trying to see how it is that at the high school level, you've been able to challenge yourself with the classes that you've taken, the rigor of those classes and your performance in those classes. And of course the external board exams and predicted grades are certainly very helpful for us as well to help us gauge um, how well you can do uh, in a college testing environment. So thank you so much for that question. Certainly. The transcript is not the only thing. We have a lot of fantastic students who are top of their class, but maybe have not been involved or um, have a lot of misspellings on their essays or, you know, really missed the mark with the whole application. And certainly, you know, in those cases, we're not able to admit those students because um, they're not showing us their effort throughout the application. They haven't shown any effort. Uh, you know, outside of the classroom to make a difference. And so this is where it all goes back to one thing that I mentioned earlier during the supplemental essay workshop, which is that every university has its own identity, right? And so when you research a university, you're learning what that university values and what matters the most to that university. And so we're looking at your applications with that lens, right? So as I mentioned earlier, the university, Boston College, is really big into community service and giving back. And so we want to make sure that we are admitting students who are compassionate, who are global minded, who are going to make other students feel welcomed um, and, and help them find a place of belonging. And so all of that are little subtle things that we pick up on when we're reviewing your applications. So thank you so much for that question. I hope that was helpful. Uh, Kidron, when will be your regular decision date for admission and scholarships? So I'm going to bring back that slide that has the deadlines. Um, and these are the deadlines relevant to you all, my seniors tuning in. Okay, so the 1st of January, 2021. Uh, cool want, I apologize if this question may be asked to you again, no worries. What will be the difference between Boston University and Boston College in terms of classroom learning, research opportunities, and career outcomes? Fantastic question. I can only speak about Boston College because that's the university that I'm representing, but I would definitely encourage you to research Boston University as well. If you're interested in the Boston area, both of these universities are fantastic. They're both research one universities, um, so they have a lot of access to resources and then it just depends on the kind of personality that you have, the kind of university experience that you're looking for. Um, and so I would encourage you to research, to attend events that they're also uh, having and, and, and conversations with students because I think that's one of the most important things to be able to converse with students who are part of the community on a daily basis to learn what they love, what they don't love. And then from there, you can really discern what it is that you want out of your college experience. So thank you so much for that question. In terms of BC with career outcomes, 96% of our students within a six month period of graduating from Boston College uh, from the previous class reported to us that they were either full time employed, working on to graduate school, working on some kind of fellowship or joining the military service after six months of graduating from Boston College. So how fantastic that BC continues to open up doors for students even after graduation. Students work very, very closely with the Career Center uh, at BC and they connect with counselors there to gauge what internships and job opportunities are available. But you won't, you won't just dive into applying without having a session with an advisor to help you gauge what do you love? What don't you love? Let's try out different things. Let's take a couple of self-assessments like Myers-Briggs and uh, Strength Finder to understand who you are and what you value. And that can be very, very insightful when you're looking at jobs and internships down the road um, and, and, to, and to help you along the way. We also have an incredible program here at BC that allows you to do uh, an unpaid internship, which there are many available especially during the summer, but we know that, that can be a big disadvantage to some students who need to pay for housing or meals in the summer uh, and an unpaid internship can be very, very tough. And so you can apply to receive money from the university, from Boston College, in order to be able to have spending money for housing and expenses. And so that's a fantastic opportunity also offered through the Career Services Office. 
We also bring uh, alumni to campus. We have our own uh, version of LinkedIn, which is a platform called BC Handshake. And through that program, uh, we're able to, uh, an Eagle Exchange, BBC Eagle Exchange as well. And through that program, we're able to have students uh, upload their resume and upload their, um, their questions to alumni to answer. And many of these positions sometimes are locked by the alumni for BC students to apply to. So it gives you an advantage. Um, I've never heard of students who have not, who have had trouble finding internships, especially in the city of Boston because we're so well connected here. So again, definitely check out BC Eagle Exchange. Uh, that's a fantastic platform for you to research. Rosh, I answered the question already. Uh, caveat, what will be the average scholarship for international students that we require to submit a separate application to be considered for the scholarship? So I just answered that question as well. So the Gabelli Presidential Scholarship is available for international students and that is a full tuition award. Uh, the university right now, it's around $79,000 uh, with uh, tuition and room and board and fees included. So this scholarship will be for tuition only, and it is merit-based. 15 students are selected every year, and the deadline is the 1st of November, and there's no separate application. It's the same application that you're using to apply to BC, which is a common application. Thank you for that question. Uh, can we get into the honors program from second year? if we don't make it for freshman year. So we don't have an honors program, a university-wide honors program at Boston College. Um, the Gabelli Presidential Scholars Program functions as an honors program. Um, so that's another advantage of receiving that scholarship, that it's, it's not just the money, but it's also the honors program, the, the events, the studying abroad, the um, internship opportunities, the conversations with professors who teach those classes that are part of that honors program. But certainly, once you're already a student at Boston College, some academic divisions will have their own academic, academic honors programs. And typically, you are eligible to apply when you're a sophomore because you will already have some um, college grades and college classes, and you have sometimes been already uh, pre-qualified by a dean at that academic division for you to apply to that honors program. So certainly be on the lookout for that. That might be relevant to your program. Aditya, would it be possible to share about housing, meal plans, and campus safety? Absolutely. So um, housing at BC, some students will get three to four years of housing. We have a lot of students who, um, it's a residential community, so around 85% of our students live on campus. And typically their junior year, students decide to live off campus. They just have this big tradition of moving off campus to experience what that would be like. And off campus basically means that uh, outside of our campus, our main campus structure, we have a couple of streets that have housing, which is considered off campus, but it's walking distance from our campus. And uh, the university work, works with the landlords to make sure that it is secured for BC students. Um, and so, it's really, really a tradition. Then senior year, 95% of the seniors live on campus, so they come back to campus their senior year if they lived their, their junior year off campus. Junior year is also a big year for students to go overseas and study abroad. I know that for some of you, you know, being for all of you being in the United States would be like a study abroad experience in itself. Um, but if you wanted to see more of the world, we do have around 50% of our students who go abroad every year. Everything is on hold right now because of the global pandemic, but hopefully in the future we'll be able to resume those programs. Um, the meal plan is on a swipe basis. So basically you pay for a meal plan and every time you go into the dining hall, you swipe and that will be the cost of the meal that is deducted from your, um, your total that you have selected as part of your meal plan. And we have around 30 or so uh, different residence halls and around five or so different dining um, areas, dining halls around campus um, that are available for students. And of course, students can eat at any of those dining halls. They're not subjected to eating at one place versus the other. Um, so, so it's really, really fantastic. Campus safety, um, the university is secured by our own uh, Boston College Police Department, by the Boston Police Department, which is a city, by the Newton Police Department, which is the neighborhood that we're in, and by the Brookline Police Department, which is nearby. So uh, thank goodness there are a lot of different um, 
people watching over the university and the students. It's also, as I mentioned earlier, a state that is highly populated by college students because we are surrounded by some of the top universities in the United States and in the world. Uh, Harvard University is across the bridge from us, MIT, uh, Boston University is nearby, of course, and we have other universities like Northeastern nearby. So there are so many, many uh, students in the area. And, and that's why the university and, and the state and the city uh, definitely looks very closely into campus safety and just making sure that everyone's safe. Around campus, students will also have um, blue emergency boxes. Uh, so as they're walking around, if they feel unsafe, they can click the button uh, that is inside the blue box and that will prompt uh, for a, a police person uh, or security guard to come in and make sure the student is safe. Um, and that's typically within an average of two to three minutes, um, the summer will be there or sometimes sooner than that. Um, so definitely in some incredible resources available. Another thing that students use is the peer-to-peer -peer system for walking around campus. So if a student feels like it's late and they're leaving the library and they don't wanna walk to their dorms on their own, they can call uh, this phone number that is available on the, the back of their ID cards and um, they can, have another student who is part of this peer program walking program uh, meet them where they're at and walk with them to their destination so that's a really great peer program that we have uh, available we also have a lot of counseling services at Boston College. So we have one-on-one -on -one, um, appointments as well as um, psychotherapy and an infirmary on campus. So a lot of different resources for students to also take care of their mental well-being. And we highly encourage that. Um, and, and, and one thing that going back to the housing question is that we also have uh, a, house, a house for healthy behaviors, a house for women, a house for students who are um, international house for students who are um, learning a new language or students of color on campus so if they want to live together because that's of interest to them that's another thing that they can apply for as part of their housing options available thank you so much for that question i hope that helped um Kishab, thanks for your question um in regards to Admissions being impacted for 2021, as many of our graduated class students this year are deferring the start date to 2021. So we actually didn't have a lot of deferrals that came through. A lot of our students are either uh, on campus, going to move to campus this fall for the residential experience with a hybrid model where they take classes online from their dorms or take some classes in the classroom. And other students who are uh, not able to come to campus such as international students or students who have who are immunocompromised are taking the classes online. Um, so many students have decided to continue with their education. So as, as of today, I don't have any updates in terms of how that would impact um, the class, your class. But at, at, as of this point, we're being told that we are looking for 2,300 freshmen for the class of 2021, which is consistent with what we've done in the past. Thanks for that question. Um, yeah. When it comes to English proficiency tests, so uh, I'm going to pose the minimums again. So we're looking for 100 a minimum for the total for the TOEFL, 7.5 for the IELTS, 125 for the Duolingo English proficiency test. Um, so we typically see students who are competitive for admission with these tests. English proficiency test scores, but of course that's just one, one piece of the puzzle as I mentioned earlier because someone can be a really great test taker but not be very involved in the classroom um, and so that's why the transcripts and other things, other documents are important. Um, for the Duolingo English proficiency test, 135 is what I hear to be the most selective, so just keeping that in mind. The students who received the Cabelli Presidential Scholarship in the past when they submitted the SAT had a 1500 plus on that test um, and a 36 plus on the ACT, if you need that information as well. Kavia, thanks for that question about master's programs. Some programs do have a master's component, uh, component available to them, and that would just depend on the program that you're looking at. So certainly reach out to that academic department. Um, all of the phone numbers and emails are available on the individual websites. Uh, Kulwan, thanks for that question on COVID-19. Um, I would encourage you to visit bc.edu 
um, forward slash admission. And on there, you can find information on the reopening plan for Boston College. I'm gonna type it in as well. Okay. Um, Josh, in terms of the question about professors and access to students, so our university, the main focus is the undergraduate student experience. So those students who are going for their bachelor's degree. So because of that, professors are highly, highly available. And they will put down their cell phone numbers and their running schedules on their syllabi. Uh, so that if you need to find them running around the reservoir that we have right outside of our campus, you can certainly meet up with them or you can certainly make an appointment to connect with them during office hours, which means that you're connecting maybe at their office after class or maybe at one of the coffee shops that we have available on campus so it's really really incredible tight-knit community and that's certainly one thing that i love about boston college that it definitely gives you that sense of community um, because of of again the values of helping you not only educate your mind but also helping you connect to your bigger purpose and your soul and your heart and in order for someone to get to know that those layers about you they really have to get to know you and so professors and staff like myself mentor students i mentor a lot of students who come into my office just to um, study use tables and study or maybe just talk about life and and careers and you know or update me about their lives and so that's certainly something that I highly, highly value about the experience at Boston College. And again, the average class size is 27 students and the student faculty ratio is of 11 to one. And I'm down to my last two questions. Uh, so thank you so much. Rash, would there be a time to quickly provide a brief breakdown of tuition, living, meals and other costs at Boston College? Certainly, I would encourage you to go to bc.edu forward slash admission and then click on affordability. And that provides a breakdown of all of that information. So certainly visit that website. And then Kashkashab, can you please go to the slide with your contact information? Absolutely. That's a really nice way to wrap up here. Uh, so again, I know the questions will continue to come up. My email is cordovac at bc.edu. Your questions have been fantastic. I wish I could stay on for longer and keep chatting with you all for the whole day, <laughs> the whole evening for you all. But I know you have to get to bed and I have to get back to my work, my work day. But I'm certainly looking forward to connecting with you all uh, beyond this session please let me know if the session was helpful to you all uh, I hope it was I hope that you know you got some clarity in terms of the supplemental essays but also in terms of Boston College it seems like many of you are very interested in BC and even just in the Boston area and I am so excited for you when it comes to that because I myself again was a student for my bachelor's degree in the Boston area and I have continued to stay here as a professional and I just love it. And I'm so happy that you're dreaming big and that you're thinking about this uh, and considering Boston College for your home away from home down the road. Absolutely. Thank you so much uh, to Miss Cindy Cordova for this wonderful, uh, really rich and engaging session, I must say, because we got a, not only a deep dive into um, you know, some um, um, rich insights for um, the topic of supplemental essays, but also it helps the counselors as well as parents and students, especially who are all applying for fall 2021 uh, to gain some rich insights about uh, uh, Boston College, life at Boston College as well. So thank you so much for this, uh, Miss Cindy. We know again, once again, uh, we know it's very early in the morning. So truly appreciate you taking your kind time out of a very busy schedule and uh, meeting with these uh, 12 great counselors, parents and students. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much, Kunal and Kunal Parekh High, High School Tours for the invitation. And I wish you all the best. Please stay safe and well. My best wishes to you all. Thank Absolutely. you again. Thank you so much. And to 12th grade students, parents and counselors, I just have a quick message. Uh, this session is recorded and will be shared uh, with your school. So counselors, to those students who were not able to join uh, in, your, in the evening after a long day of school, for, uh, please do share it with your student community so other students may learn uh, uh, and get some insights about the topic session for the day. And of course, uh, get, uh, uh, be in touch and learn more about Boston College and be in touch with Miss Cindy Cordoba long after the session is over. 
which is what we are hoping these uh, conversations continue for many many months having said that thank you once again to all the attendees thank you once again to our esteemed panelists and we all wish you a wonderful day and wonderful evening here in india take care stay safe and look forward to uh, keeping in touch thank you once again good day bye bye take care thank you bye bye